Welcome to the Tampa Native Show. Stay tuned now for the fastest 60 minutes in cable broadcast history. Live from the studios at TBCN, the home of the Tampa Native Show. Join your hosts, Mario Nunez, the 15-minute girl, and Steve Canella as they celebrate growing up in Tampa. From Shock Armstrong to Shakey's Pizza, from Braddock Street to Buffalo Avenue, get ready to call in and tell us your stories because sharing your memories has never been this much fun. And now, Mario Nunez, the 15-minute girl, and Steve Canella. She remembers me. Hi, Tampa Native Show fans. Guess what? It's Thursday night at 7 o'clock, and of course, it's the Tampa Native Show. My name is Mario Nunez. I'm seated alongside my broadcast partners. Sally Nunez. Our 15-minute girl. Right over there. Steve Canella. A.K.A. Tampa Steve. And as you can see, we opened up in the four shot, which is something we seldom do here on That's the right. Tampa Native Show. But we didn't want to delay tonight because we've got City Councilwoman Mary Mulhern with us. Mary. Welcome. Hi, Mary. Thank you. I'm honored to be part of the four shot. Nice. <laughs> very, very nice. There it's we a go. burst. <laughs> right there. It is. You know, because we usually what we do is we have... Some business that we take care of at the top of the show, housekeeping. announcements, yeah. housekeeping. But we decided tonight, you know what? Uh, it's a glorious night to start with a four shot, so mm -hmm. we decided to go ahead and do that. And we also should make mention at the top of the show, we've got a full cast and a full crew here tonight. We've got Eric Cups sitting behind the TriCaster working as technical director. Hello, Dory is back in studio with us tonight as well. She's answering your phone calls. So get ready to call in. <clears throat> Stevie, give him that number. That number is 813-977-6800. Uh, Here it is on the screen for there you. There it is. 977-6800. Give us a call. Give us a call. In just a couple of minutes, we'll be ready to take your call. Mary's going to tell us all about, A, how excited she is to be here. B, how utterly excited she is to be here with us. And C, <laughs> what it took to get here to be here with us to be that excited. So get ready to call in and ask your questions. Mary... <laughs> Let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about how be excited. Yeah, <laughs> be excited. This, is, excited. this is your time to be excited. Uh, and and we should say also, uh, as you notice, that our, our desk here is, is festooned. I guess that's the proper term with uh, with our Ebor City lamp yeah. post and of course our Joe and Sons olive oils, which we'll be giving away a little bit later with a bolita drawing. Our Garacolillo coffee, our Tampa Yankees hat, and Great. as you can see that corner over there, that's the Fufu the Gato corner as we like to refer to it. So my side. It's that's, the non-Fufu yeah, Gato what we, corner. What we're trying to do here is exercise the demons. Last week we had the Zim Bear and the Joe Gnome with us. Yeah. Mary brought us tonight a uh, Matt Garza uh, figurine. Vintage. As vintage, fi vintage figurine, Matt Garza. Because Thank Matt you Garza, very much. We're course, honored to have that. Matt Garza threw a no-hitter for us as a, mm -hmm. as a, right. as a Tampa yeah. Bay Ray. Now he's with the Texas Rangers. We wish him well. And we also have that uh, Joe Madden head bank uh, figurine. So what we're trying to do tonight is, above everything else, exercise the demons. They lost yeah. a heartbreaking 2 to nothing yeah. uh, game this afternoon to the uh, Los Angeles Angels at Anaheim. Forget it, the California Angels, easier to say. And now they have to go on a 10-game West Coast swing. Uh, they got to start off in Oakland against the red-hot Oakland Athletics team. So that's what you see there on the corner. That's our Fufugato corner. Back to Mary Mulhern. Mary, <laughs> we talked a little bit uh, at the outset. We, didn't, we purposefully didn't do much of an interview because we wanted everything that we found out and are going to find out about you tonight to be in real time. Because the reactions that you get from us, us are much more authentic sure. Absolutely. And, and much more fun. So where do we begin? Mary Mulhorn was born. 
I was born at Detroit General Hospital in Detroit, City. Michigan. The Motor City. I won't say what year. That's okay. <laughs> ba 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 boom year. Uh, but you might be able to figure it out when you see some. When of we see pictures. some of the photos, yeah, that's Great coming. Photos, by the yes. way. That's coming. Um, <clears throat> and uh, to into a family, I was the fourth uh -huh. of seven. Wow, mm -hmm. big family. I was the yeah. middle child, so that might explain something. I don't know what. Probably something. How, uh, there's some psychology there's there with a, little there's, children. Yeah. There's a willingness to uh, question and to talk loud and make sure I get heard. So that was a, mm -hmm. a big thing. Um, but yeah, I grew up in a Irish, Scotch, Irish, Italian. I'm half Italian, oh so my. I'm ah. more Latin than I am Irish. Interesting. There you go. Wow. There you go. Um, that's a passionate uh, brew. You know, yes, that's a lot of yes. uh, and I grew, exciting I conversations. I was born. My parents um, both. They were. Uh, first generation immigrants. Mm. My father's parents came over from Glasgow. They, his father was Irish and his mother was Scottish. Mm -hmm. and my mother's parents came from Bari in Italy, which okay. is near Brindisi. It's on ah. the Adriatic coast. Wow. Um, and my mother was born, uh, I'm told my grandmother was pregnant on the boat. Her parents were married oh, in Italy. Wow. So she was born in Detroit. Both families came from the Detroit area and moving here to Tampa make, makes me nostalgic for the kind of youth mm -hmm. that they had. Sure. Yeah, it sure. reminds me a lot of what it must have been like for my parents to grow up, to have families um, that stayed yeah. in the city sure. and yes. that, you know, multi-generational yeah. ethnic families and uh, so I, I feel pretty, I've always felt pretty at home in Tampa since Good. moving here because of... The cultural mix? Yeah, yeah. 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 it's, it's very similar. A little yes. bit different ethnically. Detroit had a lot more Polish. Yes. Yeah. Um, we lived there for a year. Probably, Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's a lot like Chicago, too. Right. I felt the same way when I moved to Chicago anyway. So I uh, grew up, went to Catholic schools. We lived in a little um, bedroom community where my parents built a little didn't build, but moved into a little three-bedroom ranch house and had seven children Mercy. living there One bathroom. until wow. finally they realized we needed a bigger house. So we <laughs> moved to um, Lathrop Village, which is a western suburb, um, a little bit more uh, upscale than our mm -hmm. little Inkster neighborhood. But when we lived in Inkster, my dad was on the city council. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, that was really, it was very interesting during the, I thought about it today because it was during the civil rights era. Oh. Well, and just yesterday we had the 50th anniversary yeah. of yeah. Martin yeah. Luther so King's speech. My, and my dad was a Democrat and a liberal Democrat and he got called a lot of names during I'm integration sure. I can only that imagine. was happening. Mm -hmm. sure. And he's Always been a great, you know, example. Um, we, we have a we have, we have an image picture. we'd like. We yeah, sure we'd do. like to bring up. Uh, let's call for picture five. number five. Is it? Yeah, picture number five. If you could, Eric, and uh, and you can tell us. There's your pop right there in that photograph. When was that taken? That's, more or less. That I that was probably 1966, 65 or 66. Uh, my dad still had a tiny bit of hair on the top of his head. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's. Jack Mulhern and Leonard Doc Savage, mm -hmm. also known as Doc, good friend of his that he sat on council, and that's them at, at the dais in Inkster. And uh, you can read a little bit of, that was a flyer when my dad was running for re-election, and uh, I remember having this election literature mm -hmm. around the house, and we thought literature was campaign flyers. We didn't, uh, of course. Growing up, we didn't realize you think it was so, American right. literature. We didn't right. know it was Shakespeare. Right. We yeah. thought right, it was right, these right. flyers that said, you know, I'm going to make your life better. And, and So politics, and, really, from the time you were a little girl, was uh, sort of in and around the household. Yeah, it was. It and, was. You, and you had, a, I imagine, spirited conversations at the dinner table mm -hmm. because you had a father who was uh, very politically savvy and conscious and uh, a Democrat at a time when things were changing in our country, you know? Yeah, we certainly did. Yeah. And then as we um, grew, up, grew up and uh, were teenagers and in high school and became opinionated during the, you know, late 60s, Those late 60s early, early 70s, 70s sure. the changing years. my dad became more conservative yeah. and we became more liberal. So <laughs> it, we did have very spirited debates. And, in uh, and fact, then the Irish. One of the, my brothers, right. my brother in the other picture, uh, well, he's in a let's few. Call of, for, let's call for picture four. Can, we, can, we can see the family there in picture four as well. That, that's the four oldest, uh -huh. um, or as we were known, the there big kids. Look at that photograph. Now, what's, what's that building in the background? Those are the big kids. Yeah, isn't that great? It is. My dad, um, it must have been some municipal 
conference. It was a convention, some kind of conference for municipal um, employees and officers. And so he took us to Washington with that's us. That's a great shot. This, and that's the um, daughter of um, one of his colleagues. That's you with your arms folded, one. right, Mary? That's <laughs> me, yeah. Yeah. which is really interesting. Yeah, I'm not what was sure that posture I, all about? I'm not sure what that was about, <laughs> honestly, but... Uh, Wait, hurry up and take the picture. Or, yeah, hurry or up I, I don't want to stand totally here, here, I'd rather stand yeah. there. But yeah. if I must stand here, this is my protest yeah, in silence. something like that, or I'm, I'm going to stand out in this picture. Yeah. I think exactly. that might have just been exactly. it. I don't yeah. want to just look like... That's great. Yeah. Passive. It cracks it me up. It says a lot. It's it very really funny does. because it, it, that that is a posture that um, fits me. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. It, it says, and yeah. of course, there you are in front of the White House. Yeah. Very Washington, nice. D.C. as a, I love it. As a small, as a small young girl. That's funny. Well, you know what? Mm. Um, I, I had the occasion, I've said mm -hmm. it before, to, to, be, to have gone to um, Tallahassee and serve as a page when I was in junior high. Steve, you didn't get a chance to do it. No, I did not. I. Would you have? Um, if, the, if the situation had presented itself... If I had the opportunity? Would, would, where you could have gotten out of school for a week. Oh, I would have done that. Because, see, I jumped at it because that's really and truthfully what I was... That's great. But once I got up there, yeah. and I kind of mm -hmm. saw how the whole thing worked out, it was very cool. Very, very enlightening. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you know, it's not the halls of Congress like you would see in Washington, D.C., but it is the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's yeah. a working... Con so, I can see where at an early age, if you have the proper influence, public service is something that you gravitate towards. And then if you've been with a, a family member, mother or father, who ran a yeah. campaign where you were actually one of the siblings out there passing out the mm -hmm. flyers, that becomes just a way of life. Yeah. You know, if you were a Kennedy, it was nothing to be oh, right, no, a yeah. part of that situation. That was your lifestyle. Yeah. Right. I've always felt like our family was a lot like the Kennedys, except for the money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Good, very nice. Now, now Mary, any, any uh, money and the power. Right. siblings, are they involved yeah. in any public service any, or politics mm -hmm. at all? Um, let's see. Uh, my brother, actually, who is just a year older than me, mm -hmm. is in the, next to me in the picture, he was married, is still married, and has been married to Jennifer Granholm, who was the governor. Oh, wow. We oh, like Jennifer Granholm. Yeah. So, Jennifer Granholm, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's interesting because mm -hmm. I never really. Is still married currently? School. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah, all right. So I met cool. in law school. Interesting. Yeah. And got married, and, and he had the political ambition. Mm -hmm. She did too, but I don't know if he realized how strong her ambition yeah. was. But she's from San Francisco, grew up in San Francisco, born in Canada, so she can never run for president. Oh. Uh, right. But grew up in San Francisco, and they met at Harvard Law School. Mm -hmm. And he convinced her to move back to Detroit with him after law school, which was pretty impressive. So they moved back to Detroit and she ended up just on this trajectory where she uh, worked well, she was the county she's attorney for Wayne County, which is the largest county, right. county seat Detroit, in Detroit. Yeah. Right. And uh, then she ended up becoming, uh, getting elected as attorney general and mm -hmm. then governor for two terms. Wow. So she's term limited out. So anyway, so he, his political ambitions um, had to kind of take the back seat, although I think he realized He's become an executive coach and a leadership trainer, and now mm -hmm. he's um, teaching. They moved back to San Francisco. Interesting. And, and they're both teaching at Berkeley now. Um, but so Very he cool. found that he really wasn't going to run. He, he lost the um, desire to run for office and became the supportive person in that family. And uh, I, who never had any intention for running for office, I ended mm -hmm. up running for city council. Yeah. The council for seven years now. It probably would have been difficult if they were both competitive that way too, you, you, you know. You really can't. Yeah. You know, you have you to have, have somebody's got to be in support yeah. of. And they right. had three children. So and, yeah. three children. Yeah. and three children. Yeah. And three children. He had to be Mr. Right. Mom yeah. for quite a few years. Absolutely. So a childhood spent up north. Mm -hmm. Shoveling snow. Uh -huh. Taking those uh, taking those vacations. If You know, we, we take it for granted because we have the beaches here in Florida. And uh, so what do we do, Stevie? We talk about it all the time. We go St. Pete Beach, Clearwater Beach, Madeira Beach, Reddington Beach. Yep. That's where we would go for our holidays. Mm -hmm. But up north, you know, you, you, you go, go to the, the shore, but yeah. you go to the lake. Yeah. Lake, lake Huron. Uh, lake Huron, uh -huh. Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, you yeah. know, Lake Erie if you're in the Cleveland area. So, I mean, you, there's, it's funny. And it's it still gets hot there. Of course it yeah. does, but the water always stays Cold, relatively yeah. cool by comparison. True, yeah. You know, True. I mean, the Gulf always warms right. up. The Gulf at this time mm -hmm. of the year can be yeah. like bath water. It's not no, the case with the Great Lakes. It's, yeah. It, they're always cold. They're yeah. always cold. Well, we cold. went down to Lake And they're Michigan. not just the Great Lakes. They're the awesome 
Yeah. Something awesome lakes. Yeah. They're amazing. They really are. They're the, the amazing Great Lakes. And, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we, we spent a year in Chicago. Uh, when we first, when I first started flying, we, we right lived in Chicago. Lake. We were four blocks away yeah. from Lake Michigan. And one thing that I noticed right away, I've said it before on the show, is here in, in Tampa, uh, we knew as kids growing up, you never put your shorts away, your, as we like to say, our camisetas or you know, tank tops. We yeah. never put our shorts or our tank tops away because you could be in your shorts uh, on a Noche Buena, which is Christmas Eve. It's happened. But up north, it may be the 4th of July, and if you're going for an evening walk, on Lakeshore Drive in Chicago, you better have a wrap because yeah. you're going to need that jacket. <laughs> know, you know, that. right? A wrap, a parka, I, and a scarf, and scarf long underwear. And gloves. I, I, you know, I, it was chilly. We went down there, and I was like, "It's summer. Why is it's it It's the cold? middle of summer. Yeah. It's the middle of summer. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of like that in San Diego too. When yeah. you're down there by the ocean front yeah. in San Diego, you know, it's it's cool when that water comes off, the breeze right. comes off the ocean. So uh, you know, and the coldest, what is it, the the fav the famous quote by uh, Mark yeah. Twain is. Uh, the coldest winter I ever spent was a summer, summer in San, San Francisco. Francisco. Right. Great quote, amazing. But I can tell you, the coldest winter I ever spent was in a winter in Chicago. No doubt. Where, city. where the no first thing doubt. that I did, Mary, and you can you can vouch for me on this, is I had to go immediately after getting there and realizing how cold this was, and invest in earmuffs. Earmuffs. Because it's like because yeah. you cold. don't know pain. Things that get cold <laughs> yeah. you never. Realize. You don't know pain yeah. until you get those ears where they yeah. like Wiley Coyote. And they come up behind you and flick your ear, the ear would just crack and fall off. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you grew up in that. So yeah, I you grew, get hardy, but. Well, I grew up in, in Michigan, like not buttoning my coat and not wanting. Like, I don't know what it was as a kid. You didn't want to have to wear hats and a yeah. mitt yes. and all that. Yes, yes. But um, when I lived in Chicago, all that, when I went, I would wear these L.L. Bean boots with big fat wool socks and hats and scarves and, you know, forget what kind of fashionable footwear yes. oh no no you other boots or whatever could you could not care less what right. you look like yes. it was warm. so cold yeah, yeah. you were just yeah. looking for warmth and yeah and we I, experienced that yeah. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> when we were there. and i think in great part that's why a lot of people uh, gravitate towards the south yeah. because you know as you get older you realize man i can't physically i can't yeah. handle shoveling yeah. the snow off my sidewalk and my driveway every day just to get up and go to work shoveling your car out that's of the tough. snow that's, too much work. that's, really that's what i remember because you you know everybody in chicago we lived in in flats and right. in a house that was three you know mid-rises one yeah. two yeah. or three yeah. flats yes. so right. we yeah. had you had one floor of a house with two or three bedrooms that's correct mm -hmm. um you were lucky if you had a garage there weren't enough yeah park you park on stuff. the street you park on the street and when it snows you snow have plows. to shovel your car out from under the snow it's a lot of extra work. Snowstorm. It is. It's a lot of extra work. It makes for a really long day, it's, and you're so tired just from doing that before the day. You have to get up earlier. Just That's why. That. You're happy to get to work, though. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you're inside. <laughs> you know what's funny is after people move from up north to, to Florida, uh, they lose their, their capability for handling cold. It's oh, we don't. I know. We I can't handle it. Whatever they call I can't that. handle it at all. Yeah. Yeah. We can't either anymore. And we yeah. lived in Texas for 15 years, and it got really cold mm -hmm. there. Sometimes during the winter, mm -hmm. but I if can't you take think it the, now. If you think the sum, summer makes you grouchy, if you think the summer mm -hmm. and the humidity makes you grouchy, and it does. It does, me. And it does. Try the winter. Yeah. We have six, seven months worth of heat and humidity, oppressive <laughs> heat and humidity here. Try six, seven months of bitter cold or just cold or rainy, wet cold yeah. or cold of any nature. It just gets in your bones, and I think that's a lot of times why so many people at the end of their lives, back 50, 60, 70 years ago, would move to Arizona if you were from the Midwest or if you were from the Northeast, yeah. come down to Florida to get away from that bitter. That's why I'm nasty. in Tampa. I met my husband who uh, was living here. Can and we talk about him a little bit? Sure. Is he watching tonight? I don't know. He Shall better be. I got up this morning and I said to say him, hello to Ken? Guess, guess what I'm doing tonight on a Thursday night. I'm going to be on TV. <laughs> and he goes, oh. You have a night meeting? You have a night meeting, yeah, because you're on TV all the time. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. This is a night said, meeting. No, in a way. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. So. It's a little different. Cam's got his show it's on Friday working. mornings. Fri yeah, he'll be on from 6 to 9 on WMNF. Tomorrow morning. Every Friday morning for the last 34 years. Wow. He's gotten up at 4 in the morning and gotten wow. himself to the radio wonderful. station. He and, uh, He's wonderful to us. He um, always. Um, plays Mike Baluha's wonderful song, I Remember Tampa, mm -hmm. he talks about us, uh, you know, and he's just very gracious yeah. in giving us and a lot of good publicity. thank you for that, Cam. Yeah. yeah, thank yeah. you, Cam. Mike Baluha was one of the first people I met when I moved here because he was really? um, oh, our nice courier. Yeah. Yep. 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 Delivering, because my husband and I were both working out of the house, so he was... He was your courier. Back when robot. we didn't nice. have, we really were just getting into the internet where you could share right. everything, right, right. all your files, internet, so yeah. he'd be 
back and forth doing that. Well, he's, uh, he should be watching tonight. So if you are, Mike, out there and you want to give us a quick call. I can. And, Let and me give you that number thank you, Mike, for yeah. the beautiful song you wrote for my in-laws. There it is. Oh, I listened oh, to that. It there was it is. really pretty. It is yeah. just the sweetest thing. I should have brought that picture of them that inspired his song sure. that he wrote, but I forgot. He's well, a great guy. This little show inspired yeah. the uh, the theme song to the show. So, and Mike sure is that did. guy. Mike Mike yes. is the guy that you know. He great gets guy. an idea. He gets a. There's something that grabs him. He picks up his guitar and before you know it he's created and you another. can feel the emotion yeah he, he's our he's our resident poet laureate we, mm -hmm. we tease him about that but but for sure he's out there watching tonight so 813-977-6800 if you want to give us a call uh, you got a question for mary relative to uh maybe something on the council that you want to talk you know because last week we got a couple of questions for harry and harry was uh, very on point with his answers mm -hmm. um we didn't have any pothole questions for harry last week but we had other types of questions <laughs> Uh, and and uh, we're here standing by for you. And, and we Hello had Doris some White. big issues on council today. So Did we? Might What's be pressure some shall, we, right shall we? Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about that? Sure. Sure. What uh, What was? Well, the, one one of the things we had was it's not uh, an issue that it was a workshop day, so it was discussion okay. about different things. But we had the one year report from the contract that council approved for the surveillance cameras that got oh. installed for the Republican National yeah. Convention That's in which we to, still have. Yep, 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 so yep. we had a lot of discussion about whether gonna leave them we up. should keep them mm -hmm. and whether the they've been effective yeah. and whether we they're too invasive. So, mm -hmm. um, How did that go? It, it went, was it you know, divided it was a good or? discussion. It was mostly questions for okay. the mm -hmm. TPD mm -hmm. and they need to come back. They're going to come back yeah. with some answers because they can't really prove that any of those cameras actually have, um, at least they didn't, to my satisfaction today, have really stopped crime or limited it or, or helped them with any kind of prosecution. Mm -hmm. They think maybe they do, but there's not really... The hard evidence isn't but, there. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, a hard, thing, it's a hard thing to prove. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it hasn't helped, right. but um, they really only had one example of where they know that the, the cameras did um, allow them to apprehend somebody who was um, threatening mm. and you're always going to have a woman, opposing so. view and a yeah, yeah so view. that was one thing and, and, and the other thing which I think was a positive thing was I, I had brought um, asked for a workshop to talk about um, the mayor is um, intending to put in 8,400 new street lights. It's a big That's a big deal. Right. That's a big deal. 8,400. 8, yes. Wow. Now, are we talking street lamps like the Ebola City it, Classic lamps? He's calling it, well, maybe. But what kind of bulbs there, there are going to be is what the question was okay. today. Oh. Um, he's calling it bright lights. Wait. <laughs> big city? Big city. Big city bright lights? Bright lights, safe streets, state, or something like that. Yeah. But, wow. Um, Frankly, um, but the idea, the idea is to, you know, reduce crime and, sure. and, yeah. and mm -hmm. for safety. But what... I had um, asked to talk about with Tico and with our transportation staff is putting in LED lights because of the um, incredible energy savings yes. we yes. have on that. So yes. we had a very interesting discussion about that. Huh. Good. That is interesting. Good. 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 Because it's good for the taxpayers. It, it should be good yeah. for sure. us because it will save so much money. It's great for the environment because it mm -hmm. reduces our carbon output. Correct. Yeah. Good point. Um, for Tampa Electric, the less energy you use, the less money they make. Absolutely. So hmm. we have yeah. to negotiate that issue. That, that issue. Why is that always an issue, Mayor? Why is that always an issue? Why is it, we talked about this the other day and it makes me so angry nobody can answer this question for me. Why, are we, why is gas $3.50 a gallon? I don't know and nobody can answer that. You know, I did a little research today because I got into a back and forth with somebody who shall remain nameless today on Facebook. It was just one of those conversations that, you know. Because we are dependent on oil and that, that is what makes all the money and that is what runs the world. But good answer. I don't like the answer. Basically it. I don't like the answer. Yeah. I don't like the and answer. And we're dependent, you know, locally, we're, we're dependent on our energy. We have one energy source and that's Tampa Electric Company. So yeah. we, we have to deal with that. I mean, a lot of it is political. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yeah, the fact of that, that our politics are, yeah. are Mary, determined by money. I'm going to ask you a question, then we're going to get to our caller on line four. I see you there, caller. Two stand calls. by. Mary, do you know what the minimum wage was in 1975? I should right, know because I was working so by was I. then. So yeah. was I. Um, it was $2.10. Oh, you're cents. kidding. $2.10, 1975. It's almost 19, unbelievable. Wait a minute, let me finish this. I, I, I'm on a roll here. 1975, $2.10. Do you know what the average cost 
for gasoline was in 1975? I wrote it down here. Don't cheat. It was 53 cents a gallon. <laughs> You're not really. 53 cents a gallon. So if, wow. you, use, if you use that fuzzy math, 53 cents a gallon times four is roughly two dollars and twelve cents, mm -hmm. roughly an hour's wage, right? So using that four to one ratio, so now if gas is three dollars and fifty cents an hour, let's just round that down to three dollars. Could round it up to three to four. Mm -hmm. It was almost four in Michigan right? when we were there. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's round it down to three because mm -hmm. I'm feeling generous today. And if you use that same fuzzy math, four times three. Minimum wage should be about twelve dollars an hour. Yeah, What's our minimum wage today? Eight uh, seven, seven seven no seven forty two. Seven forty two. Seven forty five. Did you know? Did you know that today was I'm a, just saying. was a, a day for uh, people were striking all over the country. Yes, yes. yes. So including up here on Fowler. Good. Oh, this is that. where yeah. in Tampa it happened. I made a dollar eighty an hour cash yeah. and carry. For fifteen, they're yeah. they're asking for a living wage fifteen dollars mm. an hour. And that's about right. If my math serves me correct, if and you know back in nineteen seventy five. 53 cents a gallon for gas, $2.10 an hour wage. You know, you there was there was a little, you weren't you didn't feel squeezed. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could work one hour and buy four gallons of gas. Yeah. Yep. Now you work one hour and you buy two gallons of gas. Mm -hmm. That's right. You don't the get very far on two gallons. You see what I mean? So I'm, I'm, just, I'm trying to. That's right. I'm yeah, it's all turned I'm, around. I'm I don't know how we got here. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to get We're all sense of it. Right? I'm just trying to make this. I'm just trying to make. I'm just trying to make happy, happy times with people. Right. You know. But let's go to line four. Yes, let's do, it. let's do it. Caller, you're on the air. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. How you doing, everybody? This is Mike Maluha. Mike, hey, Mike, Mike Maluha, how are you, sir? Good, good. I'm watching. I'm watching the show, of course, and uh, I just wanted to say hello to Mary. And I'm I'm learning a lot about her this evening that I did not know. I didn't know where she came from. I didn't know a lot of things about her. I See uh, there? Known her for a long time. Yes, you have. We found that out. Why didn't you know this before, yeah. Michael? Didn't we, did, we, didn't you have any curiosity? Like, Mary, where did you get your red hair and blue eyes? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you, I just, uh, you know, I, I knew her through camp because I, I obviously I've known camp for a long, long sure. time. Sure. Right. Part of his, part of, uh, his fan base for the 34 years that he's been on WMNF and and I certainly love his show, but I just wanted to call tonight to to express my gratitude to Mary for the years of service that she has put forth for the city of Tampa. And uh, I, I, you picked a great night to come out uh, going from the get-go on the show. Uh, that's the first time I've ever seen this, uh, where, where you just got down to business from, from the beginning with wow. a guest, and you picked a great guest to do it with. Uh, it's been a great night so far. Um, but uh, I wanted to ask Mary uh, what she had planned, and, and then I'll, I'll uh, what she had planned for the future as a, as a uh, politician. Is there an ultimate goal? Is uh, what where does she see herself five years from no, now? Governor Governor Mulhern, Senator <laughs> Mulhern, what are we talking about? Oh, I, that's that's what I want to know. That's okay. what so we want to know. <laughs> okay, well that's a that's an easy Main question, question for right now. Um, I am right now running for Hillsborough County Commission um, in 2014. My term on city council, my second term, is the last term I can serve in District 2 citywide. So I filed to run for Hillsborough County Commission, District 7, which is also countywide. And that's what I'll be doing next. Great. Good. There it is. Look forward to that. You heard it right, on heard it right here on the Tampa Native Show. Not that it was a great mystery or a secret, because a lot of us <laughs> didn't know that. That's right. But we're pleased to announce. We're happy to hear yeah. that. And we're happy to hear that as well. I, announcing I, I, again. I, I knew that because I saw that. I read that somewhere recently. Sure. And, uh, and that, that's fine. But I just wanted to add that, you know, I think uh, Mayor Mulhern sounds very... <laughs> has a nice ring to it. has a nice it? ring to it, doesn't it? Goes it goes together it so flows. well. It flows. Yeah. All right. So uh, you, you never know. Like, uh, you never know. You have to... Thanks, thanks a lot. And, uh, you know... Mike, bolita thank before you, Mike. Before you go, so much. give us your bolita number. You know, with me, it's always two bolita numbers. There's All five, right. There's Cindy's. Right. And I know better than to pick number three because I know Joe's got it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Joe does have that already. Our fans know. I'm going to say 13 or 33. All right. Okay, Mike is 13. And, 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 uh, and Cindy's going to be 18. Cindy will okay. be 18. Okay, you got it. And Mike, before we let you go, um, uh, I'll, I'll speak up on behalf of uh, Mary Mulhern. We want to make sure that uh, she has a proper and appropriate uh, a campaign song. So when she, when she launches that campaign officially for county commission, perhaps you can write a little You're jingle for her, right? and we'll, uh, we'll, so cool. we'll create a commercial, and, yeah. uh, and, and that'll be your song. I'm just putting it out there. 
No That's pressure. You have to. No pressure. I did that for somebody running uh, the, for for uh, county commissioner for number th district three or something like that. Believe it or not, I really. I, I yeah, I did that one time. But uh, yeah, no doubt time. about it. We're going to come up with something. That's great. Very That's great. Very, I love that. Very marketable and, and uh, attracting to the to the voters of this community. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Mary. And she remembers me. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I love Thanks, it. Thank you. I love it. Thank you, Mike. And thank you for the kind words, okay? Thank you, yeah. Mike. Thanks. Bye-bye. That's Mike Baluha. That's our buddy, uh, Mike Baluha. That's <laughs> great. I A campaign song. That's yeah, I love it. Fantastic, wouldn't it? we got a couple of bleeder numbers here. Please. Oh, yeah. All right. This is um, all right. Alyssa Governale, uh, number 22. All right. 22. we got a, also an email from Jim Carney. He writes, um, Buenos tardes. Well, buenos tardes. I don't know, he, I don't know Spanish, but yes, of course. very good, very good. Um, number 39. Paco Malo. Paco Malo. Number what? Number 39. Oh, 39. All right. Got a caller call on too. line yeah. five. We'll go to our caller on line five currently. Caller, you're on the air. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. This is Tom from New York. Tom from wow, New York. Wow, this is Tom wow. from New York. It's Always been a little while. Pass. Tommy, how are you? <laughs> good. How are you guys? I'm We're doing great. great. Uh, I, there's a, you know, calling in, as always, the Tampa Native Show, is, uh, the, the, there are a number of subjects that will strike right across the nation. Uh-huh. You, 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 you mentioned cold in the, in the north, and we deal with that up here in New York, so uh, that re relates to us here. So, uh, once again, something that relates to somebody else outside of Tampa. There you go. Um, so, uh, also, there was picture number five that Mary was right. in with her arms crossed, of course. Yes. There was no, there, you notice there was no fence in front of the White House. Yes. In front of the White House, yes. House. Oh, that's right. Good observation. It's just a... Different time. What kind of changing world we live in. Yes, sir. Yeah, that addresses right. that, that fence absolutely not being there. Yep, that's yeah. true. There's our technical director, Eric Cup, right, on, right the on the spot with that picture. And you're right, though. It looks like, you know, complete access to the White House. You can walk right up to the front Safer door and ring the bell. Yeah. Simpler times. There probably problem. weren't surveillance problem, cameras man, on yeah. us yep. either. So, uh, Mary mentioned the streetlights. Uh, we, we didn't worry about streetlights when we were growing up. We just outside till after dark playing hide and seek or whatever we did. But now, I mean, even in my own neighborhood, uh, the street light, when there's a street light out close to my house, we notice it. It's yeah. dark. You oh, do. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a big, that's, it is a big, big... Uh, it's a big concern. Big deal. To, to be, yes, to yeah. have lighting in your neighborhood. Yes. I'll yeah. go so far as to it's, say... Listen to this one, Tommy. I'll go so far as to say that I have one that's in front of my home, and it, it, it illuminates the area between, you know, all of our houses across the street. About four homes get illuminated very nicely with that one light. If, if the light goes out or if the trees are overgrown and, and it, it starts to obscure the lighting a little bit, like an old man, like an old curmudgeon, I'm the first one to call Tico, Temp Electric <laughs> Company, and say, you got to get somebody over and fix this light. He does. Because it gets really real does. dark, and, yeah. you know, it just... It's not that it's, it's creepy, creepy. It or, is creepy. Or I'm not, yeah, I'm not afraid creepy. of the dark a you little bit. I am. A little. <laughs> if we oh, had yeah. those LED lights, they last at least mm. twice as long. They do. Yeah. They do. And they, get, and they illuminate much the more efficiently. Better illumination. Much yes. more. Tom, it's, it's so good to hear from you, man. I'm so glad you called. You doing all right up there? Oh, we're doing okay. Yeah. Oh, good. good. Minimum wage thing up here. The New York, uh, the McDonald's, and the number of the other uh, fast food places also had a strike up in New York City. Mm. We heard about that on the news. Yeah. You know... And, and, and that's another show. That's another show yeah. in its entirety. We could do a whole show on that. But, Ow. you know, I, I'm just thinking that those jobs, man, they did, that when we were kids and we're all, you know, plus or minus around the same time, you know, those were jobs for kids. You know, yes. high school, yeah. mm -hmm. after school, you know, the adults were the managers and, right. and, and the guy working the fries. You know, we were all high school kids. Yeah. Now, you, you know, that median age has started to creep up a little bit. And you've got people that are trying to feed families. Right. As difficult as that seems, impossible at task working yeah. at a fast food place. Yeah. I, I just think it's untenable and it's, it's unsustainable. Tough. That's the phrasing. It's just, uh, you know, so I don't, hmm. the strike surprises no one and I wish them all the success in the world. And, and here's a, my public service announcement. I don't eat at those places. I, I, I try not to. Right. I mean, I've got to be having a low blood sugar episode and passing out in my car before I leave the chicken McNugget. I just want to say that for, for the record. I got you. I got you. You know, I'm thinking. All right, Tommy, you, give us your Bolita number. You do eat at Evo's. 42. Though, That's right. Evo's is amazing. Healthy, yes, but Evo's healthy is, fast food. Evo's is healthy mm -hmm. fast food. I mean, if there is, if there is such a, a thing point. as healthy fast food, and there is, it just means, 
And, and that's another show. That's another show topic. Yes, Write that it. down. We have that. You're not going to go to McDonald's. No, Tom, terrific. We're not going to McDonald's. <laughs> did we get his number? Yeah, we did. Oh, good, good. Thank you, Tommy. Call Thanks, us Tom. anytime. You hear? Nice to hear from you, Tom. Right. Great to hear from Bye. you, brother. Hey, do you want to take this opportunity yeah. to do the, um, the the Preston Hair photo? And also, I do want to. I do want to show. Well, let's look, let's talk about the Preston Hair photo at the at the end of the show. We'll come back to it in, in the, the, in the closing. The yeah, the too. picture of the okay. week as well. We need to get to more Mary. But stuff. we want to get more Mary stuff. And so let's pick up at picture number number seven right. or number six. Which one is this one, Mary? Because I don't have my glasses on. Um, I'll put them on here. Oh, number seven. Number seven. Let's number pick seven. up picture number seven. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, in, in this picture, I think it's appropriate to How say cute. she can turn the world on with her smile. Because <laughs> <That's a great laughs> doesn't that look like the Mary yeah. Tyler, Mary Tyler Moore, Moore show, show shot yeah. at the end where she's tossing her hat up? Yeah, in the... I guess so. Who that's, is that and where, and where is this? That's me with my daughter, Isabel, All right. in Chicago, right downtown Chicago on the loading dock of the Art Institute of Chicago oh. where all where the trucks would bring the art or still do yeah. bring the art into the museum and that was my job in Chicago for 13 years I worked at the Art Institute and I was a registrar for loans and exhibitions which meant I was um, in what charge years was you were you what, what years were you doing I was there, there I moved there in 1983. Wow, we she was there, there at the same time. We were there. 84, was 85. There we were there until 98 when yeah, I moved we here. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that amazing? Yeah, that's and pretty cool. The, what lions, what I the love, lions. the lions, well, this is the On this side, side yeah. Michigan Avenue. That's Michigan Avenue Correct. to the north yeah. that you're looking at. So the the Art Institute, if we had walked down the sidewalk and to the left, we'd get to the lions, to the front door yeah. of the museum. But mm -hmm. that's where. Um, the, the employee entrance was, is where we're, we are. And r as you look across the street, that's Grant Park. Mm -hmm. Yes. But what there. is yep. now Millennium Park. Oh. oh, really? So what you would see if you were looking what at President it now oh, yes. are those yeah, incredible yeah, yeah. sculptures and yes. the, mm -hmm. the big video mm -hmm. wall with the fountain and all of that. Yeah. So, but when I um, worked there, it was just a nice grassy yeah. park. With that's a great photo, Mary. That's a great photo, yeah, and, and let's, let's that's a great the, effect right yeah. there with that picture in picture. I like that I love a lot. That was it. very cool. We should do yeah. that more often. I, think. I really liked yeah. Chicago. I it's love just that it was so it's just so cold. cold. Yeah. It's so it cold. Really yeah. cold it's there. so cold. I mean, that's why I, I met my husband. I actually, oh, this is a good story. Um, I was on a on a trip for my job, and I had gone this terrible trip I had to take. I had to go to Paris. Oh my gosh. And uh, escort a painting that belonged to the museum from Paris to Madrid. Oh wow. It was awful. Oh. Terrible. Terrible. Yeah, I, I, you drew the short straw I on that really, one. You yes, definitely I drew the short straw. I was in charge of, of couriers, so I got yeah. to nice. decide who, who uh, accompanied the large thing. painting? Um, I don't remember. The uh, um, was it at the Louvre? It was a Légère. It was at, no, it was at the Pompidou. Mm. It was, more like it a was mission, modern. Really. And oh, it was modern. going to the Reina Sofia, which is the modern art museum in Madrid. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, so I did my, my work there. And I went to Malpensa Airport mm -hmm. to come back. And I happened to be uh, flying through Atlanta to get back to Chicago. And I sat next to my husband on the plane. And that's how we met. Oh, Great so story. Great we had, story. We had a nine hour blind date yeah. on a plane and where we had a lot to talk about. And he was the Tampa Chamber of Commerce. Oh, nice, Cam. Atta boy, Cam. Atta boy, Cam. He Atta was boy. just, great and job, you know, Cam. he was just, that's what he did. It didn't sure. matter who, great, who he was talking to, and he still does. Yeah. He's the well, Chamber of Commerce. We got to get him on yeah, the show. Yeah, we got to get Cam on the show. You're coming on Cam. That's, that's what my brothers <laughs> called him when they met him. Oh, is the Chamber coming the to chamber. visit? Great. But anyway, but w story. so when we were commuter dating sure. and we never really talked when we got serious about him moving to Chicago because I was cold. Oh. So and, and he loved Tampa so, so much. He convinced me to come here. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. in a perfect world, Mary, in a perfect world, we, we could, we winter in Florida, we winter in Tampa, yes. and we summer yes. in Chicago. Yes. I'd have my, uh, you know, high rise right there, on Lake right, Shore Drive, right there, just Lake a little Shore bit Drive. north, yep, yeah, yep. in that perfect world. In that perfect world. <laughs> My goodness. Because be Chica Chicago is... It's a very cool city. It, it's, yeah. You know, it's... I've never been. And New York is you amazing, too. It's the New best. York is amazing, In the too. summer. But you've got that Midwest ethic in New York, mm -hmm. I mean, in Chicago, yeah. where, you know, it, it just feels a little more, less uh, fast-paced and aggressive. Yeah. And yeah. it has everything to offer that New York mm -hmm. does. Yeah. Every and kind culture. of takeout food yes. you can imagine. Yeah. No, no, no. Be, uh, cult, and culturally, great is there music, great yeah. theater, yeah. Yeah. Tremendous great art, is really everything. Everything. 
pizza, deep fans. dish pizza. And we, you know, yeah. we have a lot in common with Chicago. I say we, the city of Tampa, because you know, Tampa, when it at its outset, at its beginning, was was a sprawling industrial complex. We know what Mystery Board did here, mm -hmm. and. You know, Chicago's always been this, we, we refer to as a city of big shoulders, yeah. but you know, you think of the meat industry, you think of all of the, you know, the thriving industry, uh, glass. Yeah. I mean, there was just so much going yeah. on in Chicago. Yep. Uh, and that's probably why so many people ended up there, you know, mm -hmm. in through Ellis Island and across, yeah. halfway across the country, stop right there on the shores of Lake Michigan, Chicago. What a great city. It is, it is I miss it. Yeah, we, we do too. We, do too. we, have, we yeah. have fond memories. We do. We have fond memories. Shall we go to another picture? The next picture, bring that picture up and we this better start great. hurrying because look at the time, guys. Yes. It's flying. Just we have a flying. caller too. Caller? Okay, we'll get to that caller in just a minute. Picture number eight. This is uh, uh, titled oh, El Gallo. Yes, and I think people should have to guess who that is. Well, does anybody know who that man is? Because <laughs> I don't even know who that man is. Winky, winky. We know who that man is. I'll tell you what. We'll get to our caller. The caller who knows who that man is uh, the next person who figures out who that man is should call us on one our, our line five that's open right now and tell us who that man is. We're we may be, just have a special prize for you. We'll be there Saturday. Caller, you're on the air. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Hey, guys, it's Davey Benito calling. Hey, Hi, Mr. Davia. Benito, how are you? Davia. Hey, well, how are you guys doing tonight? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yourself? Good. Uh, it's great to see uh, Mary. We have a, I have a civic, like uh, a lot of people call, I have a bit of a connection with Mary. Uh, uh, Cam used to work work for my father's ad agency for really? many, many, many years, um, and uh, you know he's right. He and him and Michael, like Michael Wright, uh, he is a walking, talking chamber of commerce for the city of Tampa. And uh, what um, uh, Councilwoman, uh, what you and uh, Cam have done for community radio in this uh, in this area is just uh, really not admirable. And uh, to keep you know, you guys have really been two of the driving forces that kept. M and F going, and you know I know Cam loves his job, but uh, we he's just got a bell. And we love you too, Davian. But we got a question for you. Yeah. Um, and I I'm have sure, a and I'm sure too. Councilwoman Mulhern does as well. I'll ask you: Is there anybody you don't have a connection oh, to? Oh, I would think that. <laughs> huh? Not many, you know. That's what I'm thinking. Even man. my dad knew your dad, hey, which is my, amazing. Uh, Mary Stanley, there were seven of us. There were seven of us, but I'm the last one. And yeah. not only did we all go. We all went to Glory Wilson and Plant. Sure. So if someone went to Glory Wilson Plant, there's a, you know. Within 12 years span, mm -hmm. they knew, yeah. Yeah, they knew one of the Benitos. Right. <laughs> and you went with a Benito or a grand, you know, a niece or nephew or a grandchild. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we all, and, and every time we see, I talk to someone that I haven't met, I, they said they went to Plant. I said, oh, when did you graduate? They said, oh, you must have known my sister or my, my brother or my nephew. So it's, uh. Yeah. And that's what I tell you. I've said it before. But that's one of the great things about growing up in Tampa. Yes, yes, it is. Those that's connections, Tampa. you know, you don't have those in the in the larger city. Mm -hmm. I don't think you don't have those. You know, you might have it in a small section yeah, of a larger areas, city. Yeah. But since we were a small city, and yeah. because we were so familiar with each other, it made it even feel smaller. It felt like the whole city was one neighborhood. Yeah. And, well, it was, you know, less and, people and you too. stayed here. Yeah. Like most, mm -hmm. think of it, Davian. Most of your siblings are still here, right? Yes, I have yeah. one brother that lives in. Uh, I have one brother that lives in uh, Seattle, Washington, and uh, two nephews that live in uh, Washington D.C. I'll tell you, we're still here, and you know, another funny is when, you know, I knew, I, Mario, I know you went to Jefferson. Yep. You say Jefferson, you say okay, the old, the old or the new Jefferson. Correct. So that that's another great little, you know. Yeah, you have to distinguish. Yeah. Highland Avenue or Cypress Street? <laughs> and, and the Cypress Street building now, uh, ironically, has been around longer than the Highland Street building. Wow. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like yeah. the old Jefferson is where our parents and in some cases our grandparents went to. Uh, and But the new Jefferson, the new Jefferson, which is the older Jefferson now, um, is, has been in existence longer. So it's really a, it's a sweet irony, but for sure Jefferson's one of the three main pillars of Hillsborough County Schools. I mm -hmm. guess you'd say Hillsborough, Plant, yeah. and Jefferson. Yeah. The big yeah. three. The big three. Now, I got to say, Davey, and the, the other big recruiting tool that Cam used to get me to move here was um, coming to your mom's house for Sunday brunch. <laughs> oh, God. Alan Thank Benito's yeah, those, the flan at the Sunday brunches are legendary. Oh, them. You know, yeah. she, she, that's one thing, you know, she's been gone for close to seven years, but we've kept that tradition going. That's but so good. great. And uh, Thanksgiving, you know, you thought the Sunday brunches were big. Thanksgiving, we would have people like 
me and our brother and our brothers and sisters called like the day before and said, "Is it okay if I bring a couple of extra people?" Now, a friend of mine at work doesn't have any place to go, so sometimes we'd be close to you know twenty, twenty-five people at Thanksgiving. So. Yeah. Right. So sweet. That's, you that's, know, that's awesome. Really I'm, I'm only sorry we awesome. didn't know you then, Dave. Me too. That's all. I mean, my dad knew your dad, but I never met you. To <laughs> taste some of Helen's flan, yeah. man, because it sounds like it was magic. I never yeah, got any of that. great. Well, Christine is well, still doing on, it. That's another one. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're going to have a get-together pretty soon, Dave, and so Mary, Mary will be there perhaps, and, and Cam as well, the family, and, and you'll join us, and it'll be a, a nice, fun event. So. Okay, great, great. Give us your Belito number. 46. 46. 46. It's available. And he's always winning. I know. He's he's the luckiest guy. Thank you, my brother. We appreciate it. Okay, guys. Have a good night. Bye bye, guys. You know what he proves? Great fan of the show. You know what time it is, guys? Oh, it is already? It is already. We're at the 15 minute left. Have mercy. 15 minutes to go. Wow, that 15 minute girl got us again. We got a lot of pictures to get to. We have a lot. So now I know what the 15 minute girl is. That's exactly right. That's it. That's exactly how she got her name. That was. I would have been wondering. Have you been wondering? There are many jokes. Yeah, so I can imagine. Some of them off color, but that's all right. You know, Tampa's the biggest small town around. It's amazing. It's incredible. That's proof right there. We love our we love our Tampa, and that's why we do this wonderful How about How about picture number nine? That's Let's, well, let's, let's, let's roll let's with go. number eight because we never did. Oh, we never did. That's right. That's Name right. that Name gentleman. That Nobody called in, Name so we'll tune. go ahead and let Mary tell everybody who that is. That is Judge E.J. Salcino. That is the great, the great ambassador for Tampa, yes. Mr. E.J. Salcino. Holding court at El Gallo de Oro. Every Saturday morning, yes. if yep. you want to know where E.J. is. We saw him a couple weeks ago. <laughs> we see him every Saturday. We're going to be there this Saturday. That's right. That's right. We're going to make a run by there this Saturday. We've got some new T-shirts that we want oh, to make new. I, I haven't been there in a while. I need to in go fact, on In fact, if you'll bring me up real quick on my one shot, I just want to, I want to, I didn't show this at the outset, but we're going to be giving away an I Remember Tampa T-shirt. I remember Tampa, nice. the theme song to the Tampa Native show, that wonderful song that Mike Balua. That's our grand prize. Mm -hmm. So there's still a chance to get in. You've got about five, six, seven minutes. Give us your Bolita numbers. Call in. Tell us your Bolita number. Send in an email. You might win that shirt. I so, know. and now let's get to picture number nine because if we get out of here, we don't show these pictures. Mary I will know. be upset. Oh, picture number go. nine needs no explanation. Well, needs no explanation. <laughs> I believe Mary was a judge at this year's Cuban sandwich. sandwich Festival. Yum, yum, yum. Oh my gosh, yes. I'm still drinking water to overcome oh, yeah, the well, salt oh, from all those sandwiches. Oh, salt those sandwiches were awesome. Yeah. Oh and my did, gosh. didn't uh, Michelle Fredo Michelle Michelle win again? Again. Yep. Two years again. Two years in a row. Both categories. Yep. And I'm telling you, that whatever that focaccia. Focaccia that, bread. Oh yep. my gosh. It was fantastic. The non-traditional one, it was so good. <laughs> we, <laughs> we saw, we saw uh, the mayor this, uh, this first Wednesday of the month when they have the uh, food, food truck rally downtown. Mm -hmm. And of course, we had lunch there with Michelle. And uh, it was it was delicious. As but we didn't have the focaccia. We'll have it next time. Yes, we try will. it. Oh my gosh, so place. good. Picture number nine. Picture number. Oh, I'm nine. sorry. Picture number ten. Forgive me. Oh, this is the Cuba ten. trip. Oh yeah, let's talk a, a oh, hot yes. minute about this because we showed this last week and Harry Harry. Uh, oh good, yeah. Did tell us a little bit about yeah. this. So red shirt. Give us your. Uh, that's me in the red yeah, shirt. Yeah, you in the red shirt right there. On the right. Um, that was the Tampa Chamber of Commerce's um, recent trip to Cuba, that um, I and. Councilman Cohen and Councilwoman Capine all mm -hmm. joined that trip. It was my nice. third trip to Cuba, oh. and but this was um, this was a big deal. Got a lot accomplished. We had um, we I don't know that we got a lot accomplished, but we brought such a, an important auspicious group of Tampa people Wonderful. to Cuba Wonderful. for the first time. We had um, Joe Lapano, the director sure. of Tampa International Tampa. Airport. Yeah, yeah. We had um, the trip was led by Bob Rorlack, the executive director of the Tampa Chamber of Commerce. We had Judy Genshaft, president of USF. USF? Wow. We had a number of, um, I'm trying to think who else, a lot of business people from Tampa. So it was a fantastic trip and, and, and another step toward um, Building a, a friendship between good, good. rebuilding, rebuilding, yes. rebuilding, rebuilding we about that last week the relationship we between. We were first, even before Miami. Oh, that's right. And Tampa has believe the me, legacy. they know that. Yeah, yeah. And, and your arms aren't folded here. No, no, no. no. I you was, were, I was uh, relaxed. relaxed. Yes, okay. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wonderful picture. Picture number twelve. This is the cabin where you guys just spent your vacation. We can show that ca that log cabin. That's a beautiful wow, cabin. what a beautiful and place! Isn't that beautiful? It's oh, I love it. And if you if you see it on the far right, that's Cam lounging. I do. We do see it. Yeah, yep. and, and, the and if you were Facing to away. see further to the right, you would see the White River, which is this oh, trout stream that runs through it. Cam's grandfather um, built. He didn't personally build it, but he had it, had built, it built 
in uh, 1930 and 1931, in oh the middle my. of the Depression, Look he paid that. people to walk five miles <gasps> into the woods. Oh, wow. um, a lot of people who didn't have jobs built that cabin. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, there, there are two bedrooms, and then there's a loft oh, up nice. top. So yeah. we what an amazing sleep getaway. a lot of people. Oh, I love that. that it's looks in, so welcoming. It's in the Manatee National Forest, oh, mm -hmm. an beautiful. hour north of Grand Rapids. It's, Absolutely beautiful. It's incredible. It, it is really, really beautiful. I think that would be an amazing going? place yes. to do a remote go. Uh, Tampa Native show. I, I, I do broadcast, so. broadcasting yes, live yes, yes. from well, the log cabin. I think That's Cam, a Cam might be able to help you. We Come on, a, Cam. We don't have a radio tower there yet, yeah. but you know. well, Prometheus, the Prometheus yeah, project right. is about to yes. uh, launch here in the low frequency. You probably know a little bit about that. Cam may have heard about that too. I, uh, I picture number know. thirteen. We got a few, we more. Got a few more to go. Let's hurry. We've got we'll about scan, seven we'll scan minutes to go. Yep, yeah. number thirteen. Um, that's just, that's a, a family photo um, missing my daughter who's living in San Francisco now. Oh. Very that's good. That's Miles, our thirteen-year-old tall. Nice yeah, we, we met him at Amaryllis. Picture, picture 14, the, uh, the gingers. The gingers. Oh, this picture. is my side of the family. This is the Mulherns, and that is me on the far left and my sister Anne, um, the original redheads in our family, and my brother Pat, too, but he wasn't there. <laughs> and so these are our, all my nieces Not who cute. have red hair. Great photo. So we, we try to get redhead pictures. Number 15. Day. How about those waiters? Yeah. How, about, How that? about those waiters? That is um, my father-in-law who just turned 90. Wow. We were at his 90th birthday wow. celebration Looks at like the he's cabin. in pretty good shape. That's yeah. the beautiful bridge that they built. Well, yes, rebuilt. we've got a shot of that bridge we in a minute. Rebuilt. And um, that was him and Miles on their way to wade the White River and for Little Miles fly fishing? to get a fly fishing lesson. Oh. Nice. Casting. 90-year-old grandpa. That's yeah, one. He That's goes, he goes out it? at midnight. Look at that bridge. He goes oh, out at midnight. At on those slippery rocks in that river to go fishing. Come on now. At 90. I'm Come not on kidding now. you. He does Come on not now. Be careful, Grandpa. So that's the Dilly family and the Staubs on the bridge. And you can see Newt kind of, he's... Um, yeah, they didn't even forget the, the dog. They brought the dog. One of them. Okay, this vacation, this was, this was to celebrate Newt's 90th birthday. We had uh, 23 people, some of them camping. We have to have tents because there's sure. not enough room. Yeah and six dogs oh, wow. so the ratio in the family there's there's always a lot of dogs that's the only one that Animal got in the yeah. picture yeah. picture number 17 Love that here we go big family shot look at that mary great now that's my big family um that's most of my siblings uh, for some reason my one brother and my mom decided to go to the bar and have a drink yes <laughs> so they're missing. Missing they're too. my brother who was hosting that's in the backyard of his house um, but that's me and my siblings and the um, available nieces and nephews nice. who weren't working Is, and were able to go on a Let vacation. me ask you a question. Second from the left on the bottom yeah, row. Yeah, that's, that's Jennifer. That's Jennifer, right? Governor. That's yes, the Governor that's Granholm. Said, that's, you know what, when I saw that familiar. picture, I said, that lady yep. looks so familiar. Right. Now it makes sense. And yep. that's my brother Dan, her husband, right behind What her. a oh, great, yeah. great yeah. shot. We, a great tell, tell, tell her how much we appreciate her now. Yes. Yes. Tell I, her how much yeah. we're big fans of hers on the Tampa Native Show. I'm serious. I'm serious. We really do admire her. Number 18. Picture number 18 and then 19. 18. Oh, oh, 18. I think you already yeah, saw you this. Yeah, you did. just wanted to see it again because we can't get enough of finding those I, I sent it to you. I just love that. Mary Mary yes. off too. Yeah, that, and Mary too. that it was so hot. We were what right, a fun day. We were about ready to jump into the pool, but the kids. <laughs> yeah. I should have had the picture of all the kids jumping. Very in. cool that photo. One was great. And picture number 19. This was a big moment for you as well. This was looks oh, like a yeah. great uh, shot. The, yeah, I got to um, be on the on the rope line, as sure. they say when President Obama came to the port. And uh, so he was, he was reaching over me to shake hands or hug somebody. So sure. I, it kind of if you squint, it kind of looks like he's giving me a I kiss. A kiss on the top of the head. I like that. Of course, of course. Well, you can I don't know. Fun way to give you That's a kiss on the top of the head. Yeah, and there's you can see Secret Service. Yeah, yeah of course, shoulder. with the glasses on. Yeah. Yeah. And the absolutely. crane at the port. What a great, so, like great that. shot. Yeah. What a great shot. That's yeah. so We've cool. got a couple of pictures real quick. We don't want to uh, overlook picture number one. Is the is uh, the hair family. And that's Preston oh, yeah. and Cassandra, Great picture. Just saw Tampa Preston. natives. I remember Tampa. We're going to be giving that shirt away in just a couple of minutes. We've got about three minutes in show to go. Cassandra and Preston, forgive me because I've forgotten your brother's name and I'm so sorry. Preston, you'll have to remind me. Yes. Cassie, you'll have to remind me when I see you next time. You guys look great. Great. You look great in that shirt. And thank you so much for sending that picture in Where is us. their shop? They have a hair salon? No, no, no. That's oh. their last name, the Hairs. Oh, okay. <laughs> H-A-I-R. 
That's their last that's name. A good well, idea, that would though. be good, be. though. Yes, yeah. of course, of course. It could be Preston <laughs> Hare Hare. And the, photo, <laughs> and the photo of the week, Stevie, real quick. The photo, the photo of, of the week. week. This is from the University of University South Florida. Of South Florida. Special collection. That's it. Uh, chosen by Andy Hughes. Librarian. Picture number two. So number two and three. Two real, and three. real quick. And you can do those real quick. That's oh, Goldstein's, Goldstein's Pools. Pools, Aww. which Plural. was in the 1920s pools. and 30s, Stevie. It was really, really, really early in the yeah. early years. The, the phone, numbers, Springs. Phone, phone number's four digits long. Isn't that yeah, amazing? 2992. <laughs> and let's go to the next one. There it is. There, and look, look at, at the, the pool itself. That thing. We'll it's talk huge. a little bit more wow. about that next time for sure, for sure, oh, for I sure. Oh, know about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Hang on. We have two more bleeded numbers. Okay. Big Mike Progenitor from Orlando. Okay. He has number 58. All right. And for Sherry Strawberry. Two minutes. Number 32. And we also have, um, no, that's it. Okay. Sherry that Strawberry. Have. Yeah. Sherry, who's Sherry Strawberry? I have I'm not no sure, idea. But that oh, that's his wife. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, Mike. Mary, get in there. This, is for, right. this is for 200 milliliters Are you ready? of Joe and Sons infused balsamic vinegar and uh, or uh, cold pressed olive oil. That's 71, closest to without 71. going over. 71. My, 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 my. So 7069, get in there, Mary. This is for Davian Benito. Oh, of course. Uh, Davian Benito. Every time. Every time. Every every time. He's Here's for a pound of Caracolillo coffee. This is number 53, so get on over there to Caracolillo coffee. Oh, uh, that would be Tom from New York. <laughs> we'll send you a coffee, Tom. Coffee, we'll though. send you some coffee. <laughs> he likes coffee. This is for four tickets he to Sunday's Tampa Yankees game. Four tickets to Tampa Yankees game. Mary pulled number 73. Oh my gosh. All these big numbers. All. Big yeah. numbers. Jim Kearney. 39. Jim Carney. Carney. Paco Malo. And this is for our grand prize, our I, Rem I Remember Tampa t shirt. Come on, Mary, get in there and get you a good one. I remember Tampa. One minute. One minute. And she wow. remembers me. Number 19. Number 19, number 19. goes to Cindy Baluha. Ah, number Cindy 18. Baluha. We'll make that delivery and get that shirt over to you. We've got about 45 nice, seconds. Guys. Did you have fun? Did, Did you have fun? You I, I had Why too much fun. How left? can how can someone who's only lived here for 15 years feel such nostalgia? That happens a lot. It, it's a yeah, good it's great. Yeah, it is. Thank it's you so much. It's a great place to be. Thank Thanks for having me. You'll Thanks, come back too. I promise you'll come back too. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that campaign for county commission for sure. Yes. Okay. Well, Listen, Eric two. Cups, thank you so much for making the effort to get here today from Tropicana Thanks, Field and Dory. the traffic. Thank and you, hello, Dory. Dory, for coming in to say a hello to everybody who yeah. calls us. Look at Tampa Steve right over there. Doesn't he look good with his new haircut? <laughs> he looks great. Hey, yeah. Smiling. And there he look. is. This is the 15 minute girl right next to me. And of course, this is Mary Mulhern. On behalf of the Tampa Native Show crew, I'm Marty Nunez. We love you, Tampa. Yes, we do. And we love you. Salute See you next week. Salute. Happy day. Thank you, Mary. Back when we were younger And everything seemed new We used to have a lot of fun Yes, we did No matter what we do Sleepy days, long summer nights Going anywhere we please with love that I could call my own, love that I've always known, the city that I call my home, a home from which I never roam. This love affair was meant to be. I love her and she loves me. I remember Tampa, oh, she remembers me. She remembers me. Tampa Native Show.